Hi everyone, welcome back to another session of Azure DevOps training. So till now we have seen how to create an organization and we also know how to create a project, right? Now let's say your project is set up, but then in your project there would be multiple members who would be working on the project, right? So basically in your Azure DevOps now, under your project you have to create a team and you have to add all the members of the project, okay? Let it be somebody from the development team or the QA team, DevOps and operations, whoever it is, right? Whoever is working in that particular project you would have to you have to add everyone to the team that you would be creating under the project so that everyone will have access to all the project resources all right so let's just go ahead and see how to create a team and add users so i have already logged into my azure environment and this is the organization that that i have created and i had created two projects i'll go to one of the projects in this so in order to add a member, you have multiple options that are available. So you, you can see that the moment I have reached to the project overview page, there's a button called invite. So you can click on this button and here all you have to do is you have to type the email ID to whoever you want to add. Okay. And that's it. And this is showing me the team because if you remember, this is the default team that got created when I created this project. Okay. So if you want to create a new team or like, you know, multiple teams, you can do that as well, but I'm using the default team that was there. So don't worry. I'll add this user and I'll show you that how you can create uh, additional teams. Okay. So this is one default team that I have under this particular project, which is what it is showing me that add to team. So we are basically trying to add this user to this particular team. Okay. So the moment I click on add, so the, that email ID that I entered, right, that user would have gotten an email notification that he was added in this project and he would also receive uh, a link in order to access this project. Okay. But then you can actually verify if the member got added or not from the project settings. Okay. So if I go to project settings, I would have to navigate to teams, click on the team. And in the team, you can see this is the user I just added. Okay. And using that email notification, which this user would have received that user, that email notification will have the link to this particular project. So if that user will click on that link, he will be able to access this project. All right. So this is how you provide access to additional team members. All right. So the, like, and then here you can see that there's another add button, right? This is also nothing but to add a user. Okay. So if you click on this, you can just type an email ID for any user and you can click on save and then you can add that user from here as well. Okay. So these are the two ways using which you can add members to your team. Okay. So I'm not going to add any extra user here, but you can use this way also, or you can just do it from the project page. Okay. Using the invite button. All right. Now let's just go to the organization because whoever we have added in the team, they will, they would have been added to the organization level as well. Right. So let's just go ahead and see that what are the access levels that they have in the organization. So you need to go to the organization and then click on organization settings. And then here you can click on users. So these are the users. This is the one uh, that like, you know, the one that I have logged in with, and this is the one that I added. Okay. So here, if you actually see here, you can see change access level. So you can see like, you know, what are the access level that are available, basic stakeholder and visual studio subscriber. I'm not going to discuss this in detail because uh, you don't have to worry about it for now. So like, you know, by default, whatever it keeps, that should be fine. So I let me show you something else. So if you click on manage user, right? So it shows you that this particular user, because I clicked on manage user of this user, right? So if here I click on manage user, it shows me that what is the access level that is there for this particular uh, user. And also it shows me that to which projects the access has been provided for this user. So if you guys remember, I navigated to this project and then only I invited this user, right? I added this user from this project. That is why by default, this checkbox is checked for this project. If you want, you can add this particular user to the other project as well from here. Okay. And also there's something else that it tells. Okay. So here it says that what is that, what is the role of the user in the project? Okay. He, this particular person is the project contributor. That means this person will have some edit access and everything like, you know, will be readable to this particular person. Okay. He is not administrator because administrator, administrator means that you're giving all the, Ad, edit, delete and everything like, you know, all the access to a user 
and reader means like you know they that person will not even have the basic rights to edit anything that or like you know even to chatter if they want so that is why we have a middle level of access which is called project co contributors and that is what gets assigned by default when you add a team member okay so these are the three kind of uh, roles that are available for the users and from here you can change it all right and um, i believe that's it in the project team setup and again like you know uh, one more thing if you want to create a new team you can go to project settings and you can go to teams and here from here you can create a new team okay you can provide a team like you know team name and also while providing the team name you can add team members okay and when you're adding members it's not required that you add only one member at a time you can put one email id then put a semicolon and then put another email id okay so you can add multiple email ids separated by semicolon under this particular box all right and then uh, it will also tell you that who is the administrator you can add somebody else also as the administrator when you're creating a team and these are the permissions right the contributors <clears throat> and that's it okay this is how you create a team and this is how you add the team members all right i hope you have understood this it's pretty easy i know just point and click but sometimes you just keep on searching for these options so i think it's better to keep in mind that like you know what are the ways to add team members and from where you can actually check the access level of that particular team member okay so that's it for now i'll see you in the next session and thanks for watching